So last week we made an article, I made a video also on freelancing and after seeing the excitement of all my subscribers, I decided that okay, let's make a sequel video where I'll tell you the tips and skills which you will require to make your freelancing career a success. Because in the last video we said you can do this, you can do that, but then how to get started? What would I need? Do I have all of that? And how, what all skills I can learn to start my freelancing career? That's something which we'll discuss in this video. First things first, everybody wants to earn a little extra money and there's no harm in doing that. But where it all goes wrong is you tried, didn't work out and then you go back home thinking that this was probably never the right option. But the truth is opposite of this. The truth is probably some skill sets we lacked or maybe we didn't meet the right client. Isn't that right? So that is why today in this video, I'm going to talk about all those things in detail. I've divided this video into point by point so that it is easy for you to make notes and uh, follow it. So if you have a notebook and pen and paper, please start taking notes. The first thing, strong scientific background, obviously. All of this, right, you require. Now, strong scientific background, whether it is theoretical knowledge, applied biological sciences knowledge, data interpretation, and uh, whatever is your background, all of that. So you need to have a very strong and solid scientific foundation, which is vital for your job. Because basically that's what gets you the freelancing job, right? So you need a very strong scientific background. And at the same time, when you will be talking to the client, you have to give some examples because when you are taking up a, up a freelancing job, you're going to go into meetings with them, right? So they will try to evaluate in that meeting or kind of an interview that are you the right person because they would interview several people. So you need to use your subject knowledge as a weapon. So you, that will help you market yourself. It will allow you to attract high paying clients again and again because knowledge is what makes you a magnet. Knowledge is what attracts everybody to you, right? So that's the first point. Now let's move on to the second point. Now the second point is research and laboratory techniques. So if you don't have that, please acquire that, get some hands-on skills because uh, many a times a freelancing job could be a wet lab job also, right? And it could be something like a US client wants you to do that in India and give you the data. He, he'll uh, oversee it and then you have, you have to you know uh, provide the data. One example I can give you is, so we had this client, um, she was in US, uh, heading a US company, and she wanted us to do some analysis of samples. So she sent across the samples. Since analyzing the samples in India was cheaper, so we did that here, and then we charged the client per hour basis. So we had to go into the lab, we had to do the stuff, and then we had to get the data, do the analysis, then finally give the result. And for her, it was like 10 times cheaper. For us, it was like, okay, extra money. Right, so that's what research and laboratory techniques you need to have. Be then only you will be able to, uh, um, you know, attract clients. So the first point is obviously scientific background. The second point is related, which is laboratory skills. Now let's jump on to the third point. Now the third point which I have for you is data interpretation and AI skills. Now why I'm in compiling both of them together is because there is a reason behind it. Now data you will get from the experiments. Now many a times the US client or European clients uh, will approach you and say that okay, uh, here is the data. Now interpret it using the best of the tools available with you and then come back to me with what do you find. Now generally in bioinformatics it happens or various genomics experiments it happens. So whatever data you are getting, now if you don't have good data interpretation skills, you don't have good Excel skills, right? We had a, a workshop, I think yeah, last month we had, which where we discussed about how to, you know, do the Excel uh, sheets, right? Um, and uh, we had Dr. Raja Mukasi Mangalam from Genotypic Technologies, he himself personally taught Excel. So, you know, if you know Microsoft Excel, that will be helpful. Then uh, visualizing this data in various uh, graphs or pie chart and other things and then creating a presentation and uh, giving your result, uh, the data analysis part. So all that you need to learn. Now coming to the AI tools, if you know them, that will be very useful because then a you can use AI tools to do the analysis even faster and then you can, uh, you know, cater to multiple clients. So that's the point number three. Now let's go on to the fourth point. Now fourth point is obviously having a very good knowledge of regulatory compliances and quality assurances. Because many a times, uh, when once you have built the reputation with the client, he will pass on the regulatory burden also to you that, okay, uh, read this uh, manual, understand it and suggest what are the regulatory hurdles will be there, what are the compliances I need to follow before I 
jump on and apply for the FDA approval and stuff like that. So you should have a very good hand uh, or uh, the, uh, grip on this. So, for example, I'll tell you, for India, you have patent agent, right? So if you are a patent agent or a patent examiner, you or you have knowledge of IPR, same with European uh, standards are different, US FDA standards are different. So all that knowledge, regulatory compliance knowledge will help you. Same with the quality assurance thing. So that will help you like good laboratory practices like GLP, GMP, ethical guidelines, uh, which will ensure the client that, um, that okay, the project has adhered all these regulatory standards and will help them, you know, get the approvals faster. So that's one thing which you have to keep in mind. That is regulatory compliance and quality assurance. So that's point number four. Let's jump on to the point number five. Now, the point number five is something somewhat related to the point number four, and that is intellectual property and patents. Now, one thing you have to know this as a freelancer that as soon as you will uh, sign up a client, they're going to ask you to sign an NDA, which is a non-disclosure agreement, so that you don't disclose the data to any third party. So that's something you should be willing to do that. And of course, you should not disclose also. Now, at the same time, they will ask you to, you know, uh, have the no right knowledge of intellectual property laws, patent filing process, technology transfer process, and all this becomes valuable. So if you want to get into, uh, you know, freelancing, these this knowledge also will come handy and um, patent filing, patent writing services, you can also give, do, you can uh, you do the technology transfer consulting also. We had done a technology transfer consulting in 2012 for a Korean company and it was very successful, like, our um, half of the turnover was from Korea. So that's uh, one uh, thing which I can tell you. Then you have this uh, intellectual property strategy guidance. You can do a lot of strategic uh, consulting. So basically to do all of this, you know, you have to build years of reputation, right? And uh, that I'll come to the reputation part. I'll come at the end. But yeah, so these are the pointers which you should mind, uh, keep in mind that intellectual property, knowledge and pa uh, knowledge of patents and various laws of different countries and continents you should know. Okay, so that's point number five. Let's jump on to the point number six. Now, the point number six is having a very good grip on communication and collaboration and communication tools also. I'll give you an example. So I was talking to a consultant and he didn't he knew how to use Zoom. I was like, no, I'm not hiring you. Somebody who didn't know how to switch on the camera and unmute the mic, I won't hire them, right? So even we hire a lot of freelancers, but we always look for this, that if this person is technically sound, technologically sound or not, right? If you can't handle a laptop, how would you handle a microscope, right? So communication skills are, is very important. Collaboration skills is very important. And teamwork is essential. So these are the three pointers which you should keep in mind under this uh, point. That effective communication with the com client is very important time to time, okay? And then in biotech and life sciences, uh, you will keep getting results on a daily basis, suppose. So you have to pass this on in a way that the client doesn't panic and he knows that, okay, you are progressing. And uh, it is very important because scientific ideas, scientific work is complicated, right? So if you cannot simplify it in simple words and put it in front of the CEO or the person, so this ability, this strong uh, relationship building ability will further help you foster teamwork, foster your relationship with them and it will help you convey your ideas in a persuasive way to get more work from them and of course more money from them. So that's point number six. Now let's go on to the point number seven which is networking, personal branding and reputation. Now you have to look at this. Why are you watching my video? Because you know me, right? So the same way, why would somebody give you money and work? Only when you have a reputation, right? So the same thing, nobody will part ways with their money unless they really like you, trust you and believe in you, right? So you have to build that reputation online. So use LinkedIn extensively. You have to know this that the entire money, okay? Entire money of the US, of the biotech market sits in the US and Europe, okay? And India has, of course, 100, 100 billion dollars as of now, it's an industry, but rest of the money, so if biotech is a trillion dollar industry, $900 billion is out of India, right? So if you want to attract money to yourself, you have to be very good in communication. You have to be very good in networking. You have to do a lot of personal branding online uh, via LinkedIn. So that if anybody searches CRISPR expert, you pop up. If anybody searches uh, intellectual property, IPR expert, you pop up. So whatever is your expertise, so that networking should be there. A lot of content you have to generate on LinkedIn and you have to attract clients, attract new opportunities towards you. you. You have to sit like a magnet on LinkedIn and people come to you and give you work. How that happens? When you do a lot of personal branding, when you are active on LinkedIn as a network, 
you are networked to some well known professionals you uh, participate in offline or online network events and then you give some talks or, or participate in some workshop as a speaker and then you post that on your uh, you know uh, linkedin profile so all that will help you develop networking skills and uh, of course personal branding and that will attract more clients to you and this is one of the most important part of this video which i said personal branding and networking will fetch you the money the rest part is the service delivery but if you don't have the right kind of personal branding people will never give you money as a freelancer they will because they cannot trust you they cannot believe in you they cannot they don't like you because they are you are mr nobody so if you want to become a uh, mr somebody from a mr nobody then personal branding and networking is very very important for you and one of the best ways to start is you can always send me a linkedin friend request and we can network together and i can help you in your freelancing job as well let's jump on to the next point which is the eighth point that is searching for the right freelancing opportunities now it's very very important as a freelancer to know which project to take and which project to quit okay i have done it so i'm telling you this fact in a very simple manner so uh, i think last to last month we had this opportunity where the client was ready to pay us big money but we denied and it was a 3d bio printing uh, job so we denied because we said no we we can't team up with you because our synchronization is not there right instead we took up a molecular biology project why did we do that because the person with whom i'm going to work there is a frequency this is a synchrony right there is a sync so you have to know which one to pick which one to leave so that's something you have to remember that you have to go by your gut instinct gut feeling and then only you take up so that's searching for the right freelancing opportunities now the last one which is the time management skills for you my understanding is probably you are somewhere employed as a full timer and then you are doing your freelancing or maybe you are a student and then you are doing your freelancing whichever ways you are doing or even if you are doing a full time freelancing job still time management is crucial because there can be more than one client at the same time there can be more than uh, one project at the same time there can be uh, multiple sub steps in the same project which you have to accomplish in, on the same day right so you need to be very good with productivity and then only you can do your work in a efficient manner let me give you example so i make videos for our channel biotechnica and rasayanika on a daily basis but at the same time i am efficient enough to run biotechnica at the same time i'm i'm efficient enough to um attend some uh, watson scholarship interviews and at the same time i make sure that i go ahead and have some client meetings and take up some freelancing projects for myself or biotechnica or rasayanika so you can see that this this helps me do more in less time while others are still struggling in this much of time i can do this much of work right so that is where time management skills comes into picture we have a course also in this i guess you can always check that out on biotechnica stores so that's all for today's session i think one last point which i missed probably so let me make it 10 points let, let me add one more point here and that will be client relationship building because you know once you have a client he'll keep coming back to you he'll keep paying you he will not go for a new person and you can be earning crores in the next one year or two year if you build the right kind of relation and communication is the right way to do that and never ever forget to genuinely praise your client genuinely listen to them genuinely understand their requirements and then deliver the result according to what is their requirement so these are the crucial skills you have to keep in mind and same with the income stream you have to know that if a client stays with you for a long time he's going to pay you longer time and that is the best thing in the industry there is a thumb line that relationship is everything never ever spoil a relationship so client relationship building is a must for a freelancing job and that's all for today's video thank you so much for watching this video let me know in the comment section what are your thoughts what are your questions or what kind of uh, you know new thoughts are coming up put them down and uh, i'll try to personally answer them in the meanwhile if you have any personal questions you can always email me at shekhar@biotechnica.org i would love to listen to your feedback on this video and if you have any other video requirements or anything you should like to learn from me you can always email me thank you so much keep shining bye bye